Uh, now that we've gotten a little bit of shakes out, we're going to transition to talk a little bit more about the road to 2030. So we talked a lot about 2030, how we've recently kicked off this decade of action to achieve the global goals. And I'm really honored to, uh, to kick off with Dr. Rick Steckety. Um, so Rick, if you want to join me on stage. Um, so yes, that's, that's very warranted. Um, so, so Rick was named in July 2018 to be the Deputy U.S. Global Malaria Coordinator for the President's Malaria Initiative, which we've talked a lot about over the last day. PMI is now in its 15th year, and since 2006, when it was founded, PMI, PMI uh, countries that have PMI programs um, have seen cases from malaria decline by 21 percent, and deaths have declined by 50. 7%. So PMI, working closely with the Global Fund, have been absolute game changers in this fight. So Rick comes with, he's an internationally recognized expert in malaria and medical epidemiologist with over 30 years of public health experience in malaria and infectious diseases. He spent 21 years as an active duty member of the U.S. Public Health Service, including at the CDC. He spent five years in Malawi evaluating programmatic approaches to controlling malaria in pregnancy and childhood, and he became the CDC's malaria chief uh, in 2000. He's done, had many positions, many roles, um, but he's worked closely with the World Health Organization, UNICEF, the World Bank, the Global Fund, the RBM Partnership to End Malaria, and has served, uh, he's a current member actually of WHO's Malaria Policy Advisory Committee. So it's my honor to introduce Dr. Rick Steckety. Please join me. Thanks. Thanks very much, Margaret, and much appreciated for the invitation to talk to you today. As a matter of fact, you would have had the coordinator for the global malaria coordinator talking to you, except for there's this other little disease going on, and um, and he was asked to lead the U.S. task force for uh, for COVID-19. Um, that said. I wanted to congratulate all of you. You've come here at a time when um, people have questioned travel, et cetera. Your commitment to this is, is huge. And so I thank you for that because you, you bring the diversity to this, to this fight that we don't get unless there's these kinds of opportunities to talk to each other. So, so thanks for being here. I thought I'd, I'd just begin with, with the notion that this disease actually has a fair amount of history to it, that is malaria, compared to brand new diseases. And so when, when we first looked at the parasite under a microscope and first realized that the mosquito carried it, that was about the turn of the century, not this most recent one, but in the late 1800s and early 1900s, it was a phase of discovery, understanding the biology of this. So that biology has actually carried us forward with history. And in the process, um, in 1900, essentially the globe was malaria's play, play pen. It was everywhere, not in Greenland, not in Iceland, um, not in New Zealand, and uh, Mongolia seemed to be malaria free. But otherwise, it was everywhere. As one of the oldest diseases, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control began essentially as the malaria control area in war areas um, in the early 1940s. And so the first effort to control the disease was actually to improve the health of soldiers who were being deployed to the European front in World War II. And because of the success of that program, um, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control was established in Atlanta because that was where the headquarters of the malaria control effort was. So this was, this was a big deal of moving a, um, essentially a military operation um, into a public health effort for the U.S. and extending that work globally. U.S. President's Malaria Initiative actually was, is relatively recent. We're about to celebrate our 15th anniversary. And so George W. Bush um, 
initiated this in 2005 with the understanding that this was a contribution that we, the American people, should be able to provide and support what was going on in terms of a serious disease killing lots of people globally. Obviously killing mostly children, affecting pregnant women, both directly in terms of illness, but also in terms of um, prematurity and, um, and low birth weight in their babies, which put them at risk of early death as well. So this, is, this was a, a huge effort at presidential initiative in order to address this. We started out in 15 countries. That actually occurred over the first three years um, as it grew from three to 15 countries quite quickly. Um, since that time, because of congressional support on um, both sides of the aisle, um, and you can imagine this is a disease that doesn't carry a lot of stigma with it, and because it kills somewhat randomly, and especially in children, that matters. So just a quick, quick question, how many of you have children? Have, and I know this is a very personal question, but have any of you lost a child? Okay. So I ask that because this is a disease that takes children away. And there is nothing that is harder than losing a child. So I have children myself. I can't imagine. So what you're working on is incredibly important. So back to the photo. We've, we're now working in 24 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, three countries in Southeast Asia. The sum of that is that we're working in, in the places which account for essentially 90% of all malaria cases in the world. So we're not working everywhere. But it's a concentrated effort to go into the hardest places and, and do as much as we can to support national malaria control programs, their in-country partners. Um, you've just been talking about those, those groups, um, and we'll continue to talk about those groups. But this is a substantial contribution. Just to point out that the other U.S. contribution is over in the Global Fund to fight HIV, TB, and malaria. And so between the two of them, we provide resources to both the Global Fund and specifically to the President's Malaria Initiative in these 24 countries. The progress has been amazing. So this is a photo that Tachi Yamada, who was then the head of the Global Health Group at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, took on an early trip of his to Zanzibar. This had been a very busy pediatric ward. And Tachi had extensive experience seeing such facilities with three, child, three children to a bed and then some sleeping on the floor underneath the bed. And all of a sudden, this was an empty room. And you might think that that's now wasted space, but actually that allows the health workforce and the facilities to expand their work into other diseases. So the progress in malaria can actually free up time to help health workers solve other health problems. We've saved essentially a million lives, um, some, I'm sorry, seven million lives, a billion cases, and have reduced deaths, as Margaret just mentioned, by more than 50% in the countries we're working in. That's really, really heartening, and we're doing it every day. One of the things that you may have heard about is that, that some people say, well, progress has stalled a bit. But let me explain that, because first of all, what hasn't stalled is population growth continues. We are a, we are a species that continues to um, grow in size, and, and that's occurring particularly in some of the poorest places in the world. And so in sub-Saharan Africa, in the interval since PMI started, the growth on the population has been about 60%. 
And so we're working against a larger population that could be carrying the parasite and transmitting the parasite, and we're still holding our own. So actually there is continued progress, both in terms of lives saved and in terms of cases reduced. So the stalling is, is actually potentially related to the fact that the resource base has become stable over the last five years. We have a fairly simple operation here. We're trying to do two big things. One is address the mosquito vector. And so Nothing But Nets does a huge amount of that. We also spray on walls. Um, I think there's support for that as well. But getting rid of mosquitoes and stopping them from transmitting infections is huge. The other is about the people side. So protecting pregnant women, testing people for malaria and treating those who are positive, um, that stops the parasite in people as opposed to stopping the mosquito and its parasite from transmitting to us. So it's that simple and actually what we have clearly works. But time is of the essence. So when PMI started, we started with a mantra that a child dies every 30 seconds from malaria. I don't know if if anybody remembers that, that statement. People now say a child dies every two minutes. Well, I'm not a great mathematician, but I can sort of add and subtract a little bit here. And the fact is that a child's still dying every two minutes. But if you think about it, it used to be that four children died every two minutes. So the other way of looking at this is that every two minutes we've saved three lives. Take note of that because that's really important. And it's just getting that extra one. So there's still work to be done, but that's a huge opportunity for us. What are we looking for? <clears throat> the note for 2030. So we're looking for people under nets protecting themselves from mosquitoes. Actually, I don't know how much people talk about it, but uh, the nets go both directions. So it protects us from getting bitten when we're sleeping under it. We also serve as an attractant to the mosquito because the mosquito wants to find us for that blood meal. And it comes and lands on the net. So it's actually a baited trap. It's a way of killing the mosquito, not just of protecting us. So it's a double win. The other thing we want to be doing is, is treating children when they're sick, treating anybody when they're sick. And so, again, that's a pretty simple message. One of the things that we're pushing now more than ever before, and you realize that we work in, a, in an environment now where data is available to us, and we're trying to use information to help us better target everything we do. We're also trying to put all of our tools together and get management in countries to be as good as it can be, in particular the supply chain, because pe health workers without the tools are not as anywhere near as effective as they are with the tools. And finally, it's about partnerships, and I mentioned that again because you're part of that every one of you. We're trying to bend the curve for elimination. If we don't do all that we're doing, it doesn't keep dropping. And the effort is really one of further driving that curve down towards elimination and eradication. So healthy babies born to healthy women sleeping under nets, Children who survive and go to school and are healthy enough to learn efficient, efficiently and effectively. Vibrant communities that can play this game. And making sure that we get to the last mile. That, out, that distant place that doesn't today have access that needs it for the future. <clears throat> 